my friends. A while ago, I asked over on Instagram for questions that people had about centers, and today we're gonna answer them. So these are some centers questions that people have sent in. Most of them are honestly, like pretty much all the frequently asked questions are in these, which I'm glad because then we can talk about them. And yeah, if you wanna make sure that you're around for the next Q&A, make sure that you're following over on Instagram. It's at Becca's Music Room. Just So we're gonna answer those questions today. So grab you a cup of coffee. I have mine in a Princess and the Frog mug because it was the first one that I found when I went to grab things. And it's been a long, long week. So I need a coffee to make this video. So you go grab something fun to drink and we'll enjoy this video together answering all the questions, right? Right. And by long week, I mean today's Tuesday. Long week. Now, before we get started, Two things. Number one, if your question is just uh, somebody actually asked, I think, said, I don't need, I don't have a question. I just need more ideas. So if you need some ideas, definitely click the link down below because I have a whole centers freebie. It's 12 pages of centers ideas that are little to no prep and they're categorized into different like sections. So there's like rhythm activities, melody activities, treble cuff activities, instrument, the orchestra activities, like lots of different things. So definitely click the link down below so you can grab that one for free. It also has links to videos and blog posts that talk more about different things and it has links to other freebies. So like you can get that freebie and then you get more freebies inside of the freebie. So if you look at it on the computer, you can click those links and grab those. You could also print them out if you, you know, want to do it that way, you just can't click, but it's okay. Now, number two thing I wanted to talk about is that the centers course is finally here. So fun story back in 2020, I wanted to make a centers course. And then 2020 happened and nobody was doing centers. And so I was like, yeah, that's maybe not the best idea. So I put it off, put it off, put it off. Finally, last fall, I was like, I'm going to do the centers course. We're finally going to do it. And I have been so busy and so stressed and so busy that I haven't gotten it done. But I now am almost there. So it is now available for pre-sale. So went on pre-sale from when I'm filming it was today. Um, pre-sale means that you can purchase it now. It's not available yet, but if you purchase it now, you get the best discount you will ever get. And so purchase it now, get a really good discount. And then when it comes available on the 28th of March, then you'll have access to it. So starting the 28th of March, you'll get access. It's going to be a gradual thing. So like every week you'll get more and more modules until you have all of them. You'll also get some like Facebook live videos where you can ask more questions if you have more questions and we can talk about all those things that you need to know. Um, so if you want to do it, definitely grab it and frequently asked question about the course you have lifetime asks access so if you can't do the course right now because you're like it's quarter four and everything is crazy buy it now do it over the summer that's fine but definitely grab it now um so timeline it's now available for pre-sale the 28th is when the uh, stuff is going to be available which for you to see um that's also the last day for the pre-sale price on the 30th, the course is closing and I'll reopen it later, but I don't have a date for that yet. So make sure that you grab it if you want to grab it. It will be available later. So if you're watching this video later, just check the link down below and you'll see if it's available or not. And if it's not, then you can join the email list and I'll let you know when it is available again. So I'm really excited about that because Centers is just like a whole loaded thing. Like there's just so much that goes into it. And so this way I get to really talk about like, step by step like here's what you do first then you do this then you do this like how do i figure this out and we can get really down deep in the weeds for everything plus you get tons and tons and tons of centers activities because i know that's what you're here for it's i added up it's like 175 dollars worth of centers activities most of which are not available in my tpt shop this is the only place that you can get them so i'm super pumped about that really excited with all that let's get into the questions all right, um, number one, how do you deal with noise level in centers and do you ever have instrument-based centers? So two questions. Number one, noise level. Um, to help with the noise level, because one of the things I like about centers is that the kids can talk. I don't have to spend the whole day being like, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking, because they can talk and it's fine. Um, before we do centers, we talk about how we're going to be on level two, which is a whisper voice. And I tell them if I, a regular talking voice is what I tell I say, if I can hear your conversation, you are too loud. And if I can hear you more than once, you're going to be sitting out and not doing it with us. So 
having that expectation up front is helpful. Um, make your centers as small as you possibly can because the less kids together, the quieter they're going to be and spread them out as much as you can. I know not everyone has a big room, but as much as you can, like all the way around the room so that they're nice and spread out so that they're quieter because they're further away. They're not talking across the room at people. Those things are going to help. There's also some websites. Let me see if I can put one um, that monitor the noise level and we'll have like visuals that the kids can see. And so that helps them to like know how their noise level is. So one is called too noisy light and it's like a speedometer kind of situation. And then another one's called bouncy balls. It has like little um, bubbles or balls or smiley faces and things. And as the kids get louder, they like move a whole bunch. And if they're quiet, then they like just kind of sit at the bottom. So those are some websites you can use to help with the noise level. As far as instruments goes, yes, I do have instrument based center sometimes, not every single time, but sometimes. My dog is over here just being ridiculous. I know, I'm almost done, I promise. I've been filming for like an hour, so she's like. <sighs> um, so instrument center is the key to this is number one, just being really strategic about what you pick. So I don't pick things that are loud. We're not using 18 different drums, no, no. If I do have an instrument center, I only have one instrument center so that it's not the whole classroom being on different instruments, being super loud. Um, and the third thing is to make sure that you pick things that are not easily breakable. So like, I'm not putting maracas in my instrument center because my maracas are breakable. And I know that because they've broken. Um, and so I don't use maracas because I don't want them to break. I keep like old instruments around so that I can use the old instruments and things like rhythm sticks, castanets that are plastic. Like I'm not too worried about those. So those are fine. Um, so just make sure you don't pick things that are loud. If you're going to pick, like I have had xylophones before, but if I do that, then I like hang out at the xylophone center to make sure that the kids are taking care of them well. So that's kind of a couple things there. Um, someone else asked, do you centers stay the same all year and how much variation do you have in the activities? Ooh, that's a good one. No, they don't stay the same all year, but some things will repeat. So it's not like, um, I know in the classrooms, a lot of times they'll be like, they'll do centers and it's like, this is the center. This is the center. I don't do mine that way. You you're totally welcome to do it that way. What I do use is I kind of pick a couple different things. So I always have three centers and I do two sets of them. So I have like three centers on this side, three centers on this side and half the class on one side, half class on the other side. That works really well for me because I can keep the groups down, but still have time to do all the things. I don't like it when we don't get to rotate to everything. So I usually pick a game, something we can turn in, so something written, and then something else that's kind of like whatever I decide it's going to be. And so having those parameters help me to figure out what we're going to do. We do have repeats, like after I teach you Kaboom, yes, we'll play Kaboom again later, but it's not like we don't play Kaboom every single time. We'll swap it out and it might come back later. It might come back for a new concept. And so I do repeat things, but it's not always the same because that would be boring, I would think. Right? Right. Um, um, Another person asks, how do you store your manipulatives or supplies? So a cheap way to store your manipulatives and supplies is in Ziploc bags. Um, you can use like individual things in a sandwich bag and then put them into gallon size bags to keep everything together. I also have, I'll see if I can insert a picture. Um, almost like a sturdier version of Ziploc bag that I got off of Amazon. I love them because they're so good for keeping things together and they're sturdier again. Um, I also use scrapbook boxes. So I put the things in the bags into the scrapbook boxes that are categorized by type. So I have like rhythm, melody, or even more specific, like so and me, quitteress, like things. And so as I've gotten more, I've had to like sort them out a little bit more, but that is how I like to do those. And then when we're using centers, I have like shoe boxes that are clear that I got from Target. And I put everything for the center in that shoe box. The shoe box goes out with the stuff. It comes back with the stuff and that helps to keep things organized while we're in the classroom. I think I have a video that kind of goes over some of that stuff. So I'll see if I can link that down below. Um, if someone else asked, oh, I'm supposed to say the names, but I'm really bad at saying these names. Ad Gillum, Ad Gillum said um, that she likes the idea of 
Ad Gillum says they like the idea of having the two separate like sections rotating. Um, and it says another way I was taught was instead of rotating is have the group stay and then move the activity so they don't physically move. Um, is that still considered a center? Yes. I don't get super tied up on the technical aspects of like what is a center and what is not a center. If the kids are doing multiple things, it's a center. If you want to take your center's activities and do them where everyone's doing the same activity but in small groups or individually, that's fine too. Um, it's, it's not technically centers, but it still works. And so once you figure out like centers and you start getting those things ready, you can use those things when you're not doing centers. And that's one thing I like. I use them a lot. So I'll usually do in a month, you know, if you have four lessons in a month, I'll usually have one day of centers and two days where we're doing like a small group situation with centers activities and that's kind of how I like to keep mine and really like mix it up and just have different things going on and then the other week we'll do I don't know whatever um because you know there's always other things to do as well wide man Kim said advice on running centers when you work off a cart and don't have your own space if you're on a cart centers is an excellent thing to do because they're easy to transport and they're small and a lot of them are like paper-based so if you were doing this, which I highly recommend, I usually will bring center stuff when I'm going to a teacher's classroom. Um, just have things that are not big. So small things, you know, a cup of Kaboom cards, some, you know, bingo chips and staff so you can put notes on the staff or whatever. Um, and just kind of when you get to the classroom, you can kind of section off the different areas. Usually most classrooms already have that because they do that in class anyway. So like they already are in, you know, table groups or stuff like that. And so it's really easy to just swap them out for that. Um, yeah, but it's a great thing to do if you are on a cart because it's not as much stuff and then in the teacher's classroom it's just easy so yes do that um how many centers do you run at a time three activities six centers so two sets of each um how long do you keep them going for six minutes i don't know why but forever whatever reason six minutes is like the magic amount for my classroom we typically only have 25 to 30 minutes for actual teaching and so six minutes just is like the perfect amount by the time I introduce things we rotate and we clean up like our whole time is gone so six minutes is my perfect and it's not long enough that the kids don't get bored which is also great and that was from Sydney I don't know um how do you group kids especially when you have so many based on ability behavior or randomness by the same person i do mine differentiated so when we're doing centers i go through and i take whatever activity we did last on that concept so i usually have my centers all in one concept um where we're going quarter rest okay we're doing a rhythm play along i check off who's playing the rhythms correctly okay okay then i go through and i say okay here's my groups who's here's my list of kids who like totally got it here's my kids who need a little bit of help here's my kids who need a lot of help and then i just figure out like okay if there's 24 kids i have six centers i need three in every one right 24 nope i need four in every one and so i'll go one two three four line one two three four line and then those kids go together after i do that i look through and i double check that they can get along and if they can't get along, they move. Even if it means that they, I have someone who doesn't know anything with the kids who are really, really on it, I'm okay with that because it's more important to me that we all are successful in doing the activities than that they're like with their perfect group. So that's how I do mine. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can just go, okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then again, adjust for anyone who doesn't need to be in those groups together. Um, eat the cookies. NYI said, what ages do you start with centers? And when introducing new ones, do you do whole group? So I usually will start centers at the end of second grade. And we'll usually start with like small groups and we'll start with like, here's two activities and then we swap. So it's kind of like training centers. <laughs> um, and then third grade is when we go really hard into it. Cause third grade, I find we can do a lot of stuff in third grade. I love third grade. Um, when I introduce new ones, yes, I typically do new activities whole group where everyone's doing the same thing i just have you know small groups all over the place and we're all doing the same thing so that we know how to do it um, unless it's really obvious like if it's a matching game we don't really need to do that because it's like oh this side of the heart with this side of the heart and then we got it 
easy peasy. Um, but if I have something new, yes, we do it whole group first so that everybody understands how to play it. And we'll do that like one day and then maybe the next day we do it in centers. Um, let's see, we're at 15 minutes. Music, Mrs. Fern says, I've never done centers. Can you talk about procedures? Where do you start? Um, the first thing for you would be figuring out how many centers you're gonna have and what activities you're gonna do, and then how the kids are gonna rotate through the different centers. Um, procedures wise, I always have a video up on the screen that's a timer so that I know, you know, at six minutes, the timer goes off, it's time to switch, so that I don't have to sit there and try to watch the clock because I've done that and that's very stressful and not very useful. Um, so that's kind of like the first little area. It's Procedures are a whole can of worms, so I'll link my centers playlist down below and you you can go check out the center's course when we go into serious depth about all of these things as well um how do you just so call off said how do you um how many do you do and how long do you do them i just answered that 30 minute class period excellent do three six minutes each how do you store them from finally figuring it out by grade levels no i store them by concept so i start with just like Here's all the rhythm stuff. Here's all the melody stuff. And then I get more specific. Like, okay, here's the quarter rest stuff all together. Here's all of the, you know, quarter and eighth note stuff. Here's the half note stuff. So that that way I'm like, great, we're working on half notes. Pull this box out. Here's all the half note stuff. Um, and we just go from there. And just as I've done more, I've expanded and expanded um, as much as I possibly can. Um, yeah, <laughs> Larissa Buchholz. Bu this is why I don't do this. Buchholz. Sorry, Larissa. It says, how do you manage misbehavior during centers? The student sits out. Yes. If the student cannot handle it, then they sit out. If it's a minor thing, then I'll have them sit out for just one rotation and then they go with their group to the next rotation. If it's a bigger thing or they do it, whatever it is, again, they sit out for the rest of the time. I always have lots and lots of worksheets printed out. So I'm like, oh, here, you've now chosen to do worksheets instead of all the fun games I had planned. Here you go. And they usually don't do them and they have to ball them up and throw them up in the air and I don't care. Um, the point being that they realize like, oh, I have to do the right thing. Um, so that's the short answer of that. I have a video about costume management for center, so I will link that down below to get more into depth about it. Um, I would love to do centers, but I'm afraid of noise level. Don't be afraid of the noise level, just go for it. Just go for it, just try it. If it's too noisy, you can work it out later. Um, and Ellen Ford said, honestly, just more centers ideas. Excellent, grab the link down below to grab the freebie that has 12 pages of centers. So that ought to take you at least, you know, through the end of the school year, right? Right. All right, friends, I loved answering all your centers questions. I love talking centers, I love talking pedagogy I'm just, I'm just such a nerd um but i make so really enjoy that hope your question was answered i think i got most of them um if you have not already make sure you click the link down below to get this free centers um, ideas list and make sure that if you are interested in the centers course that you go ahead and sign up asap because you want to lock in that good price if you're watching this in real time and if you're watching it later then just you know sign up anyway because it's really great and we go in depth into all of these things it is such a huge deal with all of the different things that you get i wanted to make sure you got lots and lots and lots of activities so you should be like ready to go everything's super versatile you can use it at any point of the year you can use it lots of different grades so i'm super excited about all of that and that's all i've got for today so thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time bye